Shots fired during a traffic stop. What police say the shooter was wearing during the attack on that officer and also how the officer is doing this morning. Plus, are parents becoming more comfortable with the park test? What new numbers show today? And the project has not officially started yet, but one business owner says ART is already hurting her bottom line. We'll explain the reasoning just ahead. Good morning, everybody. Care, uh, Care Community News 13 this morning. It's nice to have you with us. I'm Adam Atchison. Six o'clock. We are almost there. I know it. Uh, almost. Well, a Back lot of work. us are coming off a three day weekend. That's right. So, some of us. Traffic's <laughs> going to pick up again this morning. Yep. People are going to be inside, so that helps with maybe the heat if we're going to see warmer temperatures again. Yeah, we are going to have another warm day, but don't get used to it. We're tracking cool down come tomorrow. So, I do hope you had. Um, a nice Memorial Day because change is underway. We're going to see a little bit more cloud cover today. We're also going to see a little bit more uh, storm coverage. And then tomorrow is looking pretty soggy for us here in New Mexico. We'll take you out live. So I'm going to Crystal Mountains. Look great. You see a blue sky up there in southern Colorado. We have a little bit more cloud cover here in New Mexico, but not a whole lot falling from the clouds yet. More of that activity is expected this afternoon. Our temperatures across the state 60 is now the Kirky 48, Ruidoso 59, and TRC. You'll find those 30s up in the northern mountains in southern Colorado. So maybe a jacket to start. And when it comes to the rain chances, here's what I'm talking about a little bit of sprinkle activity to the east of Albuquerque and down across the southeastern plains with most of that cloud cover hugging the eastern side of the state. But even here in the metro, I expect more clouds as we get into the later part of our afternoon. Cold front continuing to move in out across the far northeastern plains. Plains. And really, as that front moves in, we'll see increasing wind and increasing rain chances along and behind that boundary. So rain chances look a little bit better tomorrow. Still going with some spotty storms in the forecast today, but the temperatures we're going to feel it come tomorrow afternoon down 10 to 20 degrees compared to today's high temperatures. So soak it in because it's going to be a little bit of a shock once we hit Wednesday afternoon. I'm going to break down everything you need to know and all the impacts this front will bring to our forecast coming up here in about 10 minutes. All right, Kristen, we'll see you then. Thanks. This morning, a business owner will likely open her doors to customers, worried that she's in danger of going under because of construction being done in preparation of the ART bus project. Kimberly Montano opened her hair salon on West Central two years ago. Is she worries she won't be able to stay open even another two months due to the Water Utility Authority's construction near her shop? They're replacing old water lines and moving others in preparation for the ART work to begin. Montano says since they started that construction a few weeks ago, her dry driveway has been blocked off and on, keeping many customers away. The Water Utility Authority says they know the work is impacting some businesses, but they're doing their best to minimize those impacts. I have no customers, no business, no, because people cannot get through there. We've got to move some lines, and then there's some lines that we obviously don't want to have. 50 or 60 year old lines underneath a brand new uh, bus route. Montano says she's lost a few thousand dollars so far, but she worries it'll get much worse when the actual ART construction begins. The Water Utility Authority says they hope to be done with this stretch of work on West Central by mid June. New this morning, fewer parents are refusing to let their students take the park test. That's according to the Albuquerque Journal. APS says just over 1,500 students refused to take the test this year. That's down from about 3,300 in 2015. This after some large scale anti park demonstrations happened last year. The numbers are also down in Rio Rancho. The district says they got about 60 opt outs versus 160 last year. As you wake up today, state police are looking for a driver involved in a deadly hit and run crash near Española that killed a retired Albuquerque officer. State police say 53 year old Eloise Armijo was riding her motorcycle south on State Road 68 when a truck pulled out in front of her. She died at an Española hospital. Armijo worked as an Albuquerque public school officer and police say they're now looking for a newer model silver or gray GMC or Chevy. They say it, uh, that the driver took off from the scene with a broken window. Also developing on this Tuesday morning, more rain on the way for parts of Texas already ravaged by deadly flooding. Crews near Houston rescued dozens of people yesterday as rivers consumed land and homes. Continuing storms have dumped about 20 inches of rain on the state over the past few days. A health alert in our neighboring state of Arizona this morning after a dozen cases of the measles have been reported. All of the cases stem from an outbreak at a private detention center in Illoy. State public health officials say people in Pinal and Maricopa counties may be at risk because of that potential exposure. 
New today, a South Korean military official says that North Korea has apparently failed an attempt to launch what appears to have been a medium range missile. These types of missiles have the potential to reach military bases in Asia and the Pacific. This is just the latest in a string of missile tests as Pyongyang tries to advance its weapons program. In April, they tried three times to launch missiles and failed each time. At least 23 people are dead this morning after airstrikes in Syria. Among the places hit, a local hospital, according to the Syrian Observatory for Human Rights. Video posted by that group shows volunteer search and rescue digging through the rubble in that ordeal. 605 and happening today, U.S. Senator Martin Heinrich is in New Mexico today to announce a new helicopter fleet. The new combat search and rescue fleet will replace old HH-60s, which were built in the 1980s. The announcement is scheduled to be held at Kirtland Air Force Base. Flags marking grave sites at the National Cemetery in Santa Fe are scheduled to be taken down today. The Santa Fe National Cemetery drew a pretty large crowd of people remembering fallen service men and women yesterday. My father was a Korean War veteran. Um, he's buried up there in Section 20. My grandfather was in World War II. You know, I have quite a few uncles and, and family members that were military. Volunteers placed more than 50,000 flags on the grave sites for that event. Senator Martin Heinrich made an appearance, while Governor Martinez took part in a ceremony in Angel Fire. A troop of New Mexico Boy Scouts is waking up with a new experience behind them this morning after learning to properly dispose of the flag. Scouts from Troop 64 were called in to dispose of U.S. flags that have flown in front of the New Mexico State University Police Department and are no longer fit to fly. You can see the boys salute there and then lower the flags into the ground, which is a proper and respectful way to retire a flag. New dash cam video shows the moments a man opened fire on a police officer during a traffic stop. We do need to mention the officer is OK, but watch how this unfolded. That's pretty frightening. Police say the officer tried to stop the driver when he noticed he did not have his lights on. As the officer talks with the driver, everything seemed routine until the officer opened the car door and the driver opened fire. You can see in the video that the gun was just about a foot away from the officer when the first shot was fired. The officer was able to fire back. Miraculously, he wasn't hit by any of the shooter's bullets. The shooter, though, was arrested about a mile and a half away from there by other officers. They say he was wearing a bulletproof vest and they found two more guns in his vehicle. This morning, he's facing a first degree attempted murder charge. A pilot is being praised this morning for his flawless landing after a complete engine shutdown right in midair. Oh, I'm fine. I'm troubleshooting, trying to figure out what it is, what's going on. Maybe it's my fault, something I touched, something like that. But nope, turned out the engine just wasn't putting out its power. Rodney McKnight Jr. was headed to the Gulf, Gulf, Gulf Coast of uh, Mississippi from Alabama when the engine totally shut down. McKnight says his first thought was safety for himself and his passenger, and that's when he started trying to figure out where he should land. He says he realized he wouldn't be able to make it to a runway, so he coasted the plane off to the side of the freeway. He says he was able to do it perfectly thanks to drivers keeping a, alert and making a way for him along those busy lanes of traffic. That's incredible. I see those from time to time. It's good that he made it through. The car reversed. You know, is he going to turn around? Is he going to stop? Pull out a gun? Road rage outburst. Who this driver is accused of slamming into and the charges police say that person is facing in a brazen Memorial Day attack on the road. Plus, staying out of sky high debt. What the experts are recommending you can do to help keep your future college student in good financial health. Also, a big announcement many have been waiting for when Donald Trump is expected to say how much money he's raised for veterans and where those funds have gone. Just ahead. Good morning, everybody. 630 here on KRQE News 13 this morning. I'm Adam Atchison. And I'm Kristen Curry. Today is Tuesday, May 31st. What happened to the time? May is gone just, by, just like that. Tomorrow, June, June 1st, 1st, we're getting ready. Mm -hmm. Yes, and our temperatures will follow because we will see a cooler day tomorrow afternoon, but we have the potential to be looking at 90s by this weekend. So it's going to warm up quickly, but we do have a weather maker to talk about before we get into that cloudcroft showing a little bit of cloud cover out there to the south of us and even here in the metro we have some clouds to start our day but temperature is a little warmer than yesterday currently sitting at 63 in albuquerque 47 las vegas more of those 50s and 60s as you get into the southern portions of our state but at taos down to 39 and almost the cold spot for the region at 37. 
Doppler radar still showing a little bit of some light rain trying to sneak into Lee County down there to the south. But most of this is just cloud cover with possibly a few sprinkles in the mix. But significant showers and storms likely by the later half of today, more so in the afternoon evening hours. And that cold front will help trigger these showers and storms while also kicking up the winds and cooling us down. Tomorrow looking to be much cooler than what we have on tap today before those 90s get in for the weekend. So I'm going to break down everything you need to know with today's forecast. All that coming up here in about 10 minutes. Sounds good. Meantime, it's 632 and happening today. Donald Trump is expected to hold a news conference addressing questions over millions of dollars that his foundation raised for veterans. That money was raised when Trump skipped out on a scheduled Republican debate in January and held a fundraiser instead. The development comes a week ahead of California's critical primary, where polls show a tightening race between Democrats Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders. Trump brushed the fundraising issue aside in front of a group of veterans at an event in Washington, D.C. on Sunday, all while tearing into his likely Democratic rival Clinton. She thinks the VA is doing good. If she thinks they're doing a good job, then I've been wasting a lot of time because I know the vets and they are miserable with what's happening. Meantime, Hillary Clinton's off the campaign trail today, holding two fundraisers, one in New York, one in New Jersey. And meanwhile, Bernie Sanders continues to stump for votes in California. Now back here in New Mexico, we're also just one week away from our primary. Voters will head to the polls June 7th to make their choice in key races, including for Bernalillo County District Attorney. News 13 spoke with both candidates vying for the Democratic nomination. Both of them say keeping career criminals in jail is a priority. The first step we, we need to take is to, is to figure out who are the most violent and dangerous offenders, and then we need to assign the most seasoned and experienced prosecutors to those offenders. Raul Torres is a former federal prosecutor. He says he's handled everything from low-end misdemeanors to felony murder. Edmund Perea is a former APD lieutenant. We're going to focus in on ensuring that we prosecute, we aggressively prosecute the most violent criminals. And, and, and limit the number of plea bargains that take place when it involves the most violent of criminals. Whoever wins next Tuesday's primary will face Republican Simon Kubiak in the general election. And remember, we're going to be following local and national campaigns all election season on air and online. You can stay up to date, too, with the KRQE News app. Happening today, more evidence could be brought before the jury in the trial for a former deputy accused of shooting and killing his partner. That trial is scheduled to pick up again today. Former Santa Fe County Sheriff's Deputy Ty Chan is accused of deliberately killing his partner, Jeremy Martin, at a hotel after a night of drinking in 2014. The men were transporting a prisoner. The jury has heard witness testimony from bartenders at the bars the men went to that night and hotel guests who say they heard a commotion and then shots. The trial has already been underway for one week now. Time is 634, a trial date for an Albuquerque lawyer accused of stealing $130,000 from a client has yet to be set as of this morning. Cody Kelly made his plea of not guilty to the accusations earlier this month. Kelly is accused of taking the money that had been awarded to a client through a lawsuit. Kelly showed up for a scheduling conference last week on an embezzlement charge over $20,000. That's a second degree felony that could carry up to nine years in prison. An Albuquerque man accused of stealing from a jewelry shop in Old Town is locked up again today. Bernalillo County deputies arrested Raul Garza on Friday. They say that he robbed the Best Connection Southwestern and Indian jewelry store back in January. The criminal complaint says Garza grabbed four trays of rings and took off. When an employee tried to follow him, deputies say he pointed a gun and threatened to shoot her. There's still no word this morning from deputies, though, about what caused a deadly crash that killed three people on US 550 near San Isidro. The Sandoval County Sheriff's Office says 39 year old Sean Selva of Albuquerque was killed when his truck crossed the center line and flipped. He hit 41 year old Rene Pinto and 52 year old Bruce Pinto, both of Cuba head on. They were killed. 20 year old Shawnee Pinto was also in the car and was airlifted to UNM Hospital. The investigation into a fire at the old Spearmint Rhino in Albuquerque continues this morning. Albuquerque firefighters put out a blaze inside the building off I-25 on University yesterday. There was no visible damage outside, but crews told News 13 they found the fire somewhere between the first and second floors. No word on the cause. New on this Tuesday morning, nearly 70% of college grads are walking across the stage this graduation season with thousands of dollars in debt. That's according to the Institute for College Access and Success. Experts do say there is a way for parents to help their kids avoid that debt. They recommend putting away 20% of earned income, earmark 10% for retirement, and use the other 10% toward future goals like sending kids to college. 
that may be out of reach for a lot of people. But if you need a place to put your money, experts suggest state sponsored investment accounts where your money grows tax free and qualified withdrawals are not taxed. Also new this morning, researchers at the University of Colorado found narcotic painkillers may actually prolong pain. Testing on lab rats suggests the recent rise in opioid prescriptions for humans may be making chronic pain worse and may make it last longer rather than helping to diminish it. Happening right now, the Florida State Highway Patrol is investigating a shocking road rage incident. Two motorcycle riders were injured after a driver ran them over and it was all caught on tape. and also onlookers there as the driver of a silver car goes up on two wheels when he runs over the motorcycle, knocking the couple off the bike. The man shooting the video says he saw a heated exchange between the bikers and the driver started recording. The man who was hit is a Navy veteran who says he was out for a ride. You know, I thought the guy was trying to kill us, obviously. I mean, he's, he's willing to, to back up and purposely hit the bike and then kept on going. You know, you don't know what's going through your mind. That driver, 31-year-old Robert Paul Vance, was arrested a short time later. He's now charged with hit and run and aggravated battery. According to the Florida State Corrections Department, he's a habitual traffic offender. A couple says they'll be okay, but they sure were frightened. So were a lot of people, including the person shooting the video.